Hey YouTube, this is Shrine King, and I am doing a review of Hunt Showdown. Um, now, I got to play this game um, in the alpha uh, for a short period of time, actually. And it's actually already released, which then I decided you know, maybe I should do a review. Which, um, some of the content in here so right now it's actually this is actually the alpha content um and then i also have uh, video play of the like now like kind of like per pre -per or yeah pre-purchased into beta early access type thing so right away a uh, couple things to note like this game doesn't really have a story per se it's it's kind of like just a, a like a, a principle or foundations for the game. So it's a horse uh, survival competitive type game. Uh, you are a hunter, uh, which here you can see that like fighting monsters. So there's, there's monsters throughout the stage. You can see it's really dark, uh, which actually their their overall lighting and sound is keystone to it. Um, there are there is daytime play, so like you know, not something that you're stuck to that. Uh, but essentially, there are demons in the world, and uh, as a hunter, you have been contracted, along with other hunters, to kill that demon and uh, get a bounty from it, uh, in which then you basically get money. So um, it's an interesting idea, as like it feeds off of greed. So the idea is that everyone is now uh, competing against each other will and probably kill each other uh, to try to get the money out of it. So, some things to note, uh, it has single play, um, but by playing as single player, uh, you are at a disadvantage. Uh, it is recommended for teams of two. In each uh, stage or match, there is uh, up to ten players. So, however that breaks out, if uh, you can have maximum five uh, teams of two. Or maximum of 10 solo players or the mix in between of however that about to so to get into the aspects of review uh, when I typically do a review I have certain topics uh, that I actually look into um, and for those that are not aware they are six topics uh, that I rate based off of which is gameplay is the first one difficulty is the second Design features is third, uh, stability is fourth, story is fifth, and then six is replay value. Um, this is kind of like a rating scale overall for to incorporate or uh, be built towards any type of game. Um, now, given, like I said, some games they have certain focuses, such as like this game's focus is more towards the competitive principle. Um, with survival horror, it's not necessarily something that they were focusing on story. So keep that in mind when it comes uh, to like ratings for that. It's kind of like with a grain of salt. Uh, and honestly, I'll probably just pass up um, those sections if that was not really their focus. Um, so to get started with, let's go ahead and go into gameplay. Um, now, while I played uh, during the uh, alpha, the gameplay was a little like it was kind of like mix and mi mix and match so uh, one getting into matches was kind of difficult um, once in a match the game seemed pretty good but there was kind of like delays in between stuff uh, and then sounds seemed to be off which kind of made me uh, perceive that maybe there was delays just in receiving the audio um, so the overall judgment within that would have been kind of a little rough but with that said um, as I said, the, the, I only got in for a, a alpha for just a short period of time. It was like maybe seven days, and then they went right into the early uh, release. Um, and I should say uh, release. It's early access. And just from that, uh, transitioning over, I noticed a distinct difference in the, the way that the game was just flowing, um, the way that the sounds were coming across, uh, the way... You know, like when you fire, uh, you can see the hit marks relatively quickly, which kind of goes along with bullet um, bullet trajectory and, and the speed of it. Um, so 
the actual gameplay, I'm, I'm going to rate pretty high, uh, to be honest. Because, again, I'm, I'm accounting for one that was alpha and then rating against the early access. So, in the early access, uh, getting into a match is not anywhere near difficult. I had, uh, in the alpha, I was having cases where it was like 30 minutes to maybe get into a match. Uh, and then other ones where it would say it was going into a match and then it would just fail. Um, that has not happened in this early access. Uh, with that said, uh, there are different regions, which I did test out a couple of them. I will say that when trying to use US Central, I seem to, ha seem to have the largest issues. Uh, I do believe that's just based on the amount of player base that's signing up or registering for US Central. Because, um, to be honest, uh, when you queue up for the game or the match, uh, you actually have to tell it at the top like what you're going for. So. In that, in that case, I think uh, a lot of people probably don't even notice it or didn't pay attention to it and then just queued right up. And the default is actually set for Europe, um, which also could probably impact your gameplay. So if anyone is playing in Europe, when I tried it in Europe, I didn't really have that big of a problem. Even voice comms was pretty steady, uh, which to me, I, that gave me even more emphasis on how well it was designed because if I if I'm from the US and I'm playing with uh, Europeans and I'm not getting delays or anything like that it just seems to still flow really well that to me is a big bonus so um, for these ratings I typically do five star ratings and I would actually rate the gameplay to a 4.2 um, the parts that I'm kind of uh, keying into uh, for that gameplay was to me uh, the like trying to have uh, teammates and like working together um, in that gameplay principle like how, how it works together that part still seems kind of rough around the edges to me um, it, and I don't know if it's necessarily a game design problem it's just the way the game plays out uh, so I, again I would take that with a grain of salt uh, and, and just bear in mind, a Ivo rating to me is huge. I, I typically try to not give out such high ratings. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, if, if you rate 5.0 as just a, a really good design, then fine. Um, it's probably 5.0 for you. Uh, to me, I'm 4.2. Uh, difficulty. So this game is supposed to be difficult. Um, and in this rating, because of the way the game is designed, it is a little interesting. So when you die on your character, so for example, this hunter that I'm playing, if I die, uh, whether by monster or another player, uh, I have lost that hunter for good. They are no longer, uh, I can no longer play, play that hunter and whatever, like items and valuables that they had is just gone. Uh, so that introduces a level of difficulty because you could have worked really hard on that one hunter, got him really high up there, and maybe just had a bad run of luck. Uh, and then the next thing you know, you don't have him anymore. So then now you got to go back to your life like a level one guy um, and work your way up, and that could be pretty difficult. Uh, the overall difficulty aspects to this, to me though, is the principle of how many hits, uh, or I should say, what is the game's leeway for uh, screw-ups, right? So how many hits does it take to uh, kill you? So it's an aspect of like how much punishment are you allowed to uh, get for your fouls, right? So in this, what I'm seeing is typically like three to four hits your gun. Um, if it's gunshots, depending on the caliber of the gun, how close and so on and so forth. Um, I've had cases where I've been one shot. Uh, there's cases where I was just two shot. Um, but typically, what I'm seeing, especially starting out, is uh, two hits from another player and you're dead. Uh, most of the monsters, three to four hits, probably oh, dead. Uh, so that all put packaged together, along with like you know being able to hear, understand the placements of where things are coming from, where the monsters are, um, the way that the monsters interact. I'm actually going to say. I want to aim a little lower on the difficulty because the uh, the to me the monsters are a little more predictable. They're a little easier to deal with. There's some of them that you can actually trick, so that they can't even get to you. So it's just like a free kill for them. The player versus player part is what 
really emphasizes on the difficulty. So I'm, I'm going to say it's probably about a 3.8 for a hardcore game. Something that's on the principle of being uh, very uh, unlenient um, in its des in its print like design. So if you're if you're looking for a game that's difficulty takes a lot of skill uh, does doesn't allow for a lot of mistakes, I think this is a great game, uh, and it's probably a good game for you. Uh, other games that are like that that I'm thinking of offhand that I would, I would relate it to is like Escape for Tarkov. Uh, but, like I said, uh, even in Escape for Tarkov, to me, the AI and the, uh, the non or yeah, the AI, uh, or NPCs, they're actually a lot more uh, troublesome and problematic, which brought a, like a different level of difficulty when comparing. Uh, and, that, and that game has the same principle where you all your stuff, you just, your character isn't technically dead in that one. So moving on to design and features, this is actually one I, I feel that they've done extremely well. Uh, the design and features to this game is actually really good. The, the principle of the map where, um, okay, you're there to try to hunt down a monster or a demon and it's your bounty, but you have to find hints. And those hints require a different vision, which when you're in that vision, you can't really see anything really around you. All you see is the, like what that hint is and like that blue thing on the ground that you can see there, that's actually a hint. Um, and that you get money for getting the hints, uh, you get money for getting the bounty, uh, you get experience for the hints for, and for the bounty, you get experience for all the monsters, plus uh, any players that you killed. Uh, so having that design and then having it to where it's actually a lot easier to level your hunter, and then of course because of the design of the game where your hunter um, isn't like the the whole picture so like just because you have your hunters level there's a bloodline um like part portion of it where there's an experience parts of that and then as you gain more bloodline um experience you'll start unlocking more and more things that you can then purchase and put to your hunter and like and when you buy a hunter you automatically get certain stuff with them and they, they have it where it's it's kind of like a lottery in a way um you have no idea which type of hunter you're going to get and what's really on the hunter. And that was one of the things that, to me, was is just it was beautifully done. Like, to have it to where it was like a random selection, and you can have stuff that takes, like, you got to be, like, rank 97 to get to get it. And you actually got it just because on your random pool of hunters, that one hunter that's cost, like, $200, which is really high, um, it actually has that stuff on it. Um, so that that part was pretty cool. The, the other aspect is if it turns out that you have a really bad run of luck um, and you lose all your hunters or let's say you just don't have enough money to buy another hunter, they actually have it to where they just give you a free hunter that's considered tier zero so it means it's going to have less stuff. Um, it won't be as cool as the other ones, but it at least, at least lets you have the opportunity to get into a match much like this um, where if, if you've been watching in the background, uh, this whole thing I've gone through and I've actually gotten three hints. I know where the the, uh, the end monster is, but I'm actually not gonna go for the end, the the end guy because uh, or the boss because typically that's high risk. Uh, I, again, I queued up solo. I didn't have a partner, um, which means I run the potential of running into duos um, and not me not necessarily just one. It could be all of them. They could all all the players could still be alive. I don't know. Um, and I'm just starting out with a character, so this guy's only level one. I'm like I can just go towards the like any of the exits, and then get my experience. Try to level up my guy, and I, I definitely get money for instead. I went and found since I found all three, and that, and that is a strategy that you can use. So having that design, where um, and that's the other part to it, another design principle that they have. You don't have to actually get the bounty to leave. You can leave at any point in time. You can go into a match and be like, you know what? Uh, this just doesn't look good. And as long as you can find or get to an extraction point, you can extract. Um, and the fact that the extraction points are kind of randomized also makes it kind of cool because it's not necessarily like, hey, I just spawned in and the extraction point's exactly the same and I always know where to go. Like, You, you really have to look at your map. You kind of have to plan what you're trying to do, where you're trying to go. And the risks are real throughout the stage. There's there's monsters all over the place. There's monsters that are laying, uh, pretending like they're dead. When you get close, all of a sudden they're going to pop up. Um, 
eat like their design of uh, extraction like I did like for this portion was really cool um, I didn't have any problems with that I really enjoy that they had had this kind of model um, even the bosses like the designs of the bosses uh, and, and how they like interact or fight and how much shots it takes the overall damage uh, their design uh, principle to like sound effects the fact that they went for this type of timeline all in all like everything that they package together in their their design and features has been great uh, and I really do appreciate what they got so like um, for me I, I would give it a 4.7 I mean, that's pretty high and the only reason I'm saying not not all the way is because I feel like if there was a way for them to account for design um, and having features where there is uh, an orientation to single player for those um, maybe who just you know, aren't, aren't very good with uh, random pulls to have a partner um, or uh, like even the aspect of you know having like a, a, a real single player mode where they can kind of practice and um, just play on their own maybe through a couple stages and stuff like that. There's certain features that would be nice. This doesn't exist. And I understand why. So I want to, I want to make sure that's understood. Uh, for their game design, it is focused towards teamwork. It is focused towards certain things. And they are sticking to it. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, so a 4.7, even, even for this regard, is not a knock on them. It is actually a really good plus. Uh, and I want that to be out there. Uh, stability. So the the alpha, I did have some concerns or issues with stability. Uh, overall, the game seemed to be stable to a sense. It was just like the factor of like trying to get into a match and it takes forever for the match. Um, then like when in the game, uh, the, the delays and stuff like that. That if you're looking at stability in that sense, uh, I would say it was a little rough at least at first. And then like I said, everything seems to be really good now. Uh, with their early access uh, but since the early access uh, I still have there's a couple things that don't quite work um, correctly but they're, they're actually not that harsh um, to work around or get fixed uh, so for example when you go into the match or I'm sorry when you go into the game uh, I actually have a larger monitor so I, had, I sw swap the resolution and if you go past the 1920 by 1080 resolution the overlay of the game kind of freaks out uh, the easy way to resolve that is to, actually you can still click the accept. Please like do that. Um, then actually just control alt delete. Use your task manager to uh, close the program, uh, reopen it, and, and it should work fine at the resolution that you got or that you wanted, I should say. Um, other than that, that's it. Like everything else is running stable. Uh, it's it's really good. Like I. I haven't had any problems with their their network. I haven't had any issues with the uh, well. I would say I haven't had any issues with game glitches impacting my overall gameplay. Uh, I did have, and actually it's in this it's in this video too, um, a little later in one of my matches. Uh, Thunderstruck, uh, which causes a bright light, and I was kind of like doing the dark vision, and some reason that kind of glitched it. Uh, and caused it to where uh, I actually started seeing everything like in a bright blue, uh, which to me was kind of funny because it, even with that being kind of a glitch, it actually was to my benefit. So if other players were there, to me they would have been like dark silhouettes. I would have actually seen them a lot easier because it was like a contrast uh, type of viewpoint. Um, but other than that, like everything's been really good. So I want I'll. In this case, I want to say, uh, honestly, uh, considering its state, I would actually say a, a five. Uh, and the reason being is because of how early this is and the fact that I am so used to games being in early access um, or, you know, alpha or beta. And they're just not very stable. They crash. They just, you know, all sorts of like network issues and get all sorts of like game glitches where things are flickering and all sorts of stuff. Uh, this hasn't really had that. Uh, not in their early access. So like I said, uh, the alpha, I had a couple things, wasn't a big deal. Um, in the, the early access, though, I haven't had any of it. So yeah, I would definitely get, I would tip my hat to them. I would give them a five. 
uh, towards that because it's just it's really impressive when you consider it. Uh, this story, like I said, there is no real story, um, so I won't. I'm not really going to judge that or give any uh, rating. What I will say is, I know that there's a lot of talk um, about story and having like a single player mode and stuff like that. Um, uh, hopefully the devs are listening to it. Hopefully they they kind of take that in because I, I think what their overall design and, and what they've developed is amazing. Um, if I really do think that they can actually build that into a story. Um, currently what they've done for story is they're kind of like making books and comics. So what I'm really hoping, uh, maybe potentially in the future is that you will see those, uh, comics and, and books or that storyline will be something that you actually play out as that particular hunter, um, and maybe go through certain staged scenarios and stuff like that, that are, are towards that. That would be really cool from my impression, but to, to my knowledge, I don't know of anything that's being designed that way for the, for their game. Uh, and then replay value. So uh, this one's a little hard uh, to rate. Uh, so currently there isn't really a lot of different material. There's there's just the two or the two bosses, but pretty much the same stage. Um, so there's not a lot of maps. Uh, the bosses are pretty much always identical. Each each round that you play though is very different. So your location um, that you spawn in can be different. The location of your enemies can be different. The play style of your partner can be different. The play style of your enemy might be different. Um, there's just there's all sorts of stuff that varies from match to match, uh, which to me is what emphasizes heavily on a replay value. Um, but if going off of content specifically, uh, I don't know if there is a real high replay value. Where I'm going with that is uh, based on, like, for example, maybe I just want to you know, keep fighting different bosses. Where there really isn't a lot of bosses to choose from. Like the aspect of the stages, if you, if you get really you know, bogged down on the, on stages being identical, um, then, yeah, you, you might not like that. Uh, so that principle, because of those, that, those aspects, I would say that replay side not so good but to me personally when um, playing this have and going through the feel of it and, and the desire to play again if I'm looking at that I would say yes it actually has a good replay value um, as for like extra content or anything like that uh, I'm not too certain on that one because uh, honestly like the, even the ranking it takes a while to get the ranking so like when I see like rank 97 to unlock new equipment uh, I feel like that's going to take a long time, and that, and which while that's that's cool, uh, at the same time that doesn't make me want to continue playing uh, towards that goal. Right? Maybe I'll do it for other reasons, um, but that wouldn't necessarily be the focus. So on that on that aspect, I'm going to actually give them a 3.5. Uh, but again, this is early access. Uh, there are plenty of things that they plan to implement and bring out and as they build it i i would like to say that that replay value is only going to be so uh overall i mean when you when you consider i would actually give this this game a 4.0 out of out of five it is a great game um it is a lot of fun and it's currently only 30 dollars um and maybe that's something i should also kind of rate is pricing uh so for its current state everything that i just said at the price of thirty dollars I think is really really good um, I would be sad if they they upped it uh, mainly because of content uh, but if they started you know bringing in a lot more uh, bounty choices they bring in uh, other like maybe game modes uh, or a lot of different maps um, or even like for example story um, into the game itself rather than being book or like separate books or material uh, I would say all of that gives good good reason to increase the price, uh, but currently, in it, like I said, in its, in its state, I think what they've got is, is really good. It's very nice. Um, so that's the review altogether. Uh, I still have uh, probably about another 15 or so minutes of actual gameplay uh, footage. Uh, you're more than welcome uh, to watch it all the way through. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to try to do some commentary for 
the stuff that's going on just for those that are maybe not necessarily fully interested in the review but also wanted to know like what's going on in the game um as it as it's playing here uh so it is really dark so i do apologize i do apologize for that hindsight i'm looking at this maybe it would have been nicer to have like a, a daytime um video for this so in this case I, I did run into another player uh Sadly, I only have a pistol for distance shots, so it made it a little complicated to try to fight. So I get a shot into him, uh, and I've actually pulled away. Uh, so here, I uh, what I wanted to do is kind of draw him out of where he was to come after me. That way I can kind of control it, try to listen to what's going on. Um, but I'm not seeing him anymore, so I, I am looking around. So uh, one thing to note, uh, particularly with this game, kind of interesting is so like when you aim down sights uh originally like the first like when you go to aim you don't aim down sights you actually have like this kind of halfway in front of you kind of aiming thing um and then you can actually hold shift uh or like the whatever you set up for like your the, what was the shift button for like breathing um or sprinting and that will actually make you aim down sights like that and what's interesting is the view distance changes so like you can actually it's more like a way to uh kind of zoom in uh so they, they no matter what weapon you're using if you aim down sights it zooms in like that so in a lot of these cases like i might not necessarily be able to see very well so you'll see i'll actually kind of like aim down and really all i'm doing is looking through there to see if i can see anything now in the meantime i keep hearing gunshots uh, so I'm actually getting to, like, I hear off to my right, so instead I'm actually going left, which is, so, we're looking at, like, southwest, so off, uh, to, like, northwest or northish, that's where all the gunfire is coming from, so that's why I started moving in this other direction, and I started planning kind of, like, what I wanted to do based on it, because in this match in particular, uh, I wanted to make sure I got experience and leveled up uh, the player and see if I can't get any money out of it. Uh, which the money I'm aiming for would have been like the hit. So here again, I'm just kind of like that's kind of where that guy was. So I'm looking to see can I see him? And I've kind of reworked where I was. I still hear the gunshots off to the distance, and I just I'm not I'm not seeing him. So speaking of the weapons, so like uh, there's different types of or there's different types of pistols, but they're they're also like similar in their bullets. Um, but you'll find ones that are have like maybe longer barrels. They may have uh, different bullet capacities, so on and so forth. And some of them do like more damage, but typically they do more damage. They're, they're less accurate, so they're harder to hold stable and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's the shotguns. So the shotguns are pretty powerful in the game. The nice part about those is that shotguns will actually knock down targets, um, at least monsters. I haven't confirmed it for players because usually if you end up getting close enough and use a shotgun on a player, they're dead in one shot. So they drop no matter what, right? <laughs> uh, the pistol, though, uh, what I did notice is and it's kind of interesting in, in the way that they did it. So when you're aiming with a pistol, it's very shaky. When you aim with a rifle, it's not as shaky. So, like a lot of this, uh, while I'm aiming down, if, you, if you'll see it kind of a little bit like wiggling. Bear in mind, uh, it is much worse if you are not trying to compensate. Uh, so when I'm aiming down there, I am trying to compensate for it, so it's not as bad. Then here, so here's the case in the match. All right, now I wanted to kind of go for hints. Uh, so when banishing starts, uh, hints are gone. So now it's all hunters basically break for the banishing, try to stop them from doing the banish, or try to get their uh... yeah, try to get their. Um... I, think, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, well, the bounty. So like. If they successfully banish, then the bounty drops. They pick that up, and then you basically can kill them and take that and try to get out yourself. Um, so that's the case where a lot of the difficulty comes in pretty heavy there. 
So while banishing, you have a, quite a while that you have to wait. Uh, what does work out in some of your advantages is, uh, for example, like where I'm at in comparison to the zone that they're banishing from, it will take me a quite a while to get there. Uh, and the reason not being is not necessarily that it's that long to run there. It's because of all the monsters and uh, threats without, within the area, um, or I should say throughout the areas, of trying to get there. So in this case, uh, I made the decision that I don't really want to go after the bounty. Um, instead, I just want to get experience. So I'm, I'm trying to work my way around, um, checking out things. Being a little careful because, again, the guy that I saw before, I don't know where he's at. He can be anywhere. Um, and here's some of the stuff I was talking about where you can kind of uh, work around the monster mechanics. So, like, this guy's kind of slow. He's supposed to come, like, charging. And you'll see I'm just shooting him with the pistol through the window. He's still going to be pretty slow. And even if he did try to come over and try to charge, he wouldn't actually charge. And it's funny because this is actually one of the glitches I've actually, uh, actually had occur. So uh, you'll see that, like you saw that I was aiming at him, I went to fire, and suddenly it was just like a stream across the screen, and I didn't know what it was um, or what happened, and then I'm sitting here, I went to the other window kind of waiting for him, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't come, like I can't really hear him, I'm not, you know, I don't see him, so I'm like, okay, let's go out and see, because I swapped to the shotgun, because that way I'd knock him down if he comes to charge, and I come out here and I'm looking, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. He's gone. He's not there. Like, okay, did he go around the house? Not in the wall. And he's not on the side of the house. Is he on the other side? No, he's just gone. Uh, so that was actually a glitch. Uh, I think it counted as a kill, uh, but he literally disappeared. He went in the infinite beyond. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have no idea what happened with that monster. Um... But hey, you know what? That's free experience. So absolutely love that, right? <laughs> Either way, like honestly, like I said, uh, the, the workaround to it was because I was in the house. He doesn't really charge into the house. I'm hoping that they'll actually have where they set it up uh, kind of towards that where charging into the house. Uh, yeah, or maybe they'll randomly charge if it takes so many hits. And, Anything like that to kind of increase some of the difficulty for themselves. Uh, and with that said, it's not that I haven't died by the monsters. It definitely happens. Uh, so for those who might be looking to play, uh, you saw where I kind of pulled the shotgun all the way back. That's actually a power attack. You hold a uh, left click. Uh, without hitting right click, because right click will actually make you aim weapon, and left click will make you fire while you're aiming. But if you hold left click only, you go into a power attack. Also, if you tap left click, you'll do like a shove attack, uh, where you can hit them uh, and kind of like push them away a little bit. But the power attack definitely knocks them back. And like you saw, it takes two power attacks uh, with like the starting weapons uh, to do that. Now, if you have melee weapons, which you can get, uh, so like there's a machete, it's awesome, by the way. Uh, one power attack will kill those guys that you saw me killing. Uh, and it also causes like rending. So you didn't do a power attack, let's see, whack them kind of away. They're supposed to take rending damage. I don't know how long that works out on a monster, but I do know like on players, rending is bleeding, and if you're bleeding, it is a pain in the ass because uh, it does take out quite a bit of your uh, health, it keeps going over time uh i believe it actually will keep going even into others so here's one of the thing i like want to point out so like i said they started banishing they've already banished and i found a place where the hint was uh and even then i still cannot activate that hint so uh that's one of the key components that kind of is rough to me so like if i got into a match and it turns out whatever reason a group of players like a, a a team was right next to the boss um, and they walk into the barn and right away they're like oh look and then they go ahead and kill it and you know they start banishing it immediately it wipes out any other potential money uh, that people can make or experience can get like for the rewards of said things 
Um, I would really like it if maybe like maybe they don't have to like you can make it to where your vision only shows the lightning, but if you actually happen to go through the stage and find it, um, I would still like to see that you can pull that for money and experience. Because once this like this scenario occurs, the only money I can get in this match now is if I go after the players and the bounty. Uh, which in like this particular case, I probably would have never made it because the location that they would have gone, when they would have gone far north um, to extract, which is exactly what they did when I was watching the map, and I was far southeast. So it, it would just take me forever to try to get there. And by the time I got there, what would most likely happen is they would have already left. See, like here, it's already say that they're... Oh, actually, no, that one they're saying. Bracket. Um, but yeah, this one, they, like, they didn't. it doesn't really take them that long to get out. So me trying to catch up to them probably would have never worked in the first place. So, like, money is kaput at this point for me. So really all I could do is try to get experience. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is if they actually would make it to where when you kill a player you get money. Um, not to necessarily give an emphasis on trying to hunt players, but you will run into players, you will find players, you will have to fight players. Um, killing those players... <laughs> By the way, so you can see that uh, I shot a red barrel. Uh, because it is actually an explosive barrel. What's cool is that there was a light that came out of it and the monster kind of stopped to look at it and it blew up and it, and it was the same thing too. Like So when it blew up, that monster just disappeared. It's gone. Uh, but it is dead. Uh, that part I can kind of understand because I mean, it did blow up with like a big big barrel of like, DNT next to it. But um, going back to the, the topic of the players, I would really like to see where, because you do get quite a bit of experience if you kill a player. But I would like to see that there's a, like a maybe a bounty, um, like a cash value you get for them. Um, and I'm actually I'm even good with it being the same amount as the hints, twenty five dollars. Um, so essentially, that makes it to where it's, it's not all about the bounty or the scenario that uh, the bounty is actually coming through by getting cleared pretty quick then you're not totally kaput for money. If I ran into a player and I killed the player, I would still be. As you see, like, going, even going into a house is dangerous. We didn't hear the monsters just laying on the... Uh, well, actually, I think he was just sitting in a chair. Come up and come to attack you. Now, some, and bear in mind, like, some of them, it'll be like there's only one, right? Uh, some houses, there's like... Some of it can even be where you go in there and it's not even like these uh, kind of like uh, pawn guys, right? It's like the heavy ones that uh, you know take like seven shots to kill and it'll be like three of them in the house. It's It can be very, very dangerous. So speaking of some of the content stuff that they have, uh, there is ammo. There's a bunch of stuff all over um, the map. Uh, so while you're running around, you know, like you see barrels, I would check on top of barrels. There might be like certain boxes that you see that are kind of open. I would actually look inside the boxes. They might actually have something there. Um, then there's like the big red box, which is actually like an ammo resupply. Um, there's like med kits and stuff like that. And, and like I said, sound in this is really good. Right? Lighting and the sound uh, are definitely some top-notch stuff that comes with this game. So like right here, it's like, oh, okay, so one of them was down. So I was like, well, I'm going to have to use my shotgun and stop this because uh, otherwise, like I said, if that guy got up to me and started hitting me, it only takes two to three hits and I'm dead. Uh, and then if anyone noticed, the when I shot the one, I literally blew his arm off, which the arm actually got stuck in the air. Stuff like that. I, I've seen a lot of games that run, uh, especially in their early stuff. Uh, not really a big deal, right? It actually leads for some uh, leads to some good walls. So here, like the players are already extracting. See, hey, it was a party to they did get out. Uh, so both bounties are gone. Um, so with that in mind, what I want to make sure I note here is that at that point, right, once they get out, you really only have like five minutes left to try to get out of the stage. It's supposed to give you a warning, um, at least one time it gave you. Uh, 
this I'm not uh, necessarily seeing the warning. So uh, I would say good rule of thumb, five minutes is about what you got. I think they say it could be up to 10, uh, and I don't know how it gets depicted or anything. But I had, I, I know in the alpha, I did have a couple of them where it did not show that the, uh, um, the timer, like what, what timer was left or how much time was left. And then me and a buddy were actually still in the match when it did and it just killed, it actually just killed the guys. Um, so for example, one thing I want to point out is that Hive, so you see that they had bugs. I got close. Uh, she automatically hit me. So here's the bleeding, by the way. So you see, I was poisoned. Now I'm no longer poisoned, but now I'm bleeding. And it will keep bleeding out all the way until I stop bleeding. So that's where the rend becomes kind of nice. Um, because you, like, if you kind of hit and run type stuff, you spend time trying to heal themselves or bandage themselves just to stop it. Because once you stop the bleeding, right, wherever your life is at, you start kind of regenerating health, which you'll see now I got my second bar back. But the third bar is out. It is gone. Um, and it's not permanently. I actually have to find, like, uh, either I have to have my own health pack on myself as a consumable or a tool, right? Um, or I have to go find a health pack somewhere, which, like, in this case, I just found one right there, and that healed me up. Now, in the event that you're playing with somebody else, this is kind of one of the reasons why I said there's a lot of emphasis on teamwork. Uh, if, for example, I actually got down by the monster... Uh, what ends up happening is I permanently use lose one bar of health for that match. So, for example, I, I have three bars of health. I have a big bar, and then I have two small bars. So if I were to die, I would have lost one, so I'd only have one big bar and one small bar. Uh, when my ally, uh, if, if he can, brings me back, right, reses me, I come back uh, with one bar of health. Uh, I can find health hits right so like the ones i found before and that would bring me up to two but i could never get that third one back for them. uh if in the event i went down again i would be stuck to one bar and if i went down one more time at that point I, it's done my guy is dead there's no way to bring him back so that's that's where the advantages kind of come into to the uh, multiplayer but in the gist of that we're running out of time um so you'll see here i got the extraction i i did get out that was great um and then once you go from this, it goes back into like kind of like your rewards. Um, and that, that's the gist of Hunt. Uh, so it is a lot of fun. It's a great time. I, I definitely recommend it. If you're into horror uh, kind of games, it's definitely a really good one to, to play just for the fun of it. Um, so you'll see here, this kind of shows you. And I'm going to end with this. So again, thank you, everyone. Uh, please, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing reviews all the time for a bunch of different games. I have a lot of them. Uh, and feel free to like if this was useful for, for you. And even send a dislike if, you know, if it's not. And tell me what I can do better. You know. Uh, thanks again. And have a great one, guys.